21 and 27, 95% accuracy. Yes, I think we go with single shot. Oh, come on. I am fairly perturbed about that miss right there. All right, we are here today with another banger in War Saw. This is one I've been following for a bit now because when I first saw it, I'll be honest with you, the combat itself reminded me of Darkest Dungeon and I saw it in action and I was like, this just reminds me of uh, a war-focused dungeon, which is pretty cool because, hey, I'm a big fan of Darkest Dungeon. But then as I read up more about it, it kind of really intrigued me overall because Warsaw is all about the small little uprising that determined itself not to be oppressed by the Nazi regime during World War II. So we essentially played as this revolutionary group and we go out in missions, try to help other cities to continue funding us as we try to fight off the Nazi regime. I think this video should be out by the time the game is out, so when you see this video, it should already be available. All the information will be down below anyway. Let's get to it. The year is 1944. Battered by opposing forces on two fronts, the Third Reich begins to crumble. In Central Europe, Poland lies at the heart of the storm, caught between the whining Nazi oppression and the rising Soviet threat. There is little hope for release. Despite the unfavorable odds, the Polish Home Army, now an underground resistance movement, is given the go-ahead by the country's government in exile. As the final part of the countrywide Operation Tempest, they are to launch one last time. I wasn't I was done reading. That's a shame. <laughs> August 1, 1944. The W Hour. So essentially right now, this will be our group right here. We have three characters in our current party. And we gotta just move down. Get to the point where we gotta go. We just reach the hideout. These areas over here are telling us that these are boarded off so we cannot pass through there. There's also gonna be like enemies out about. Loot that you can find, etc, etc. But this kind of works as like your dungeon in Darkest Dungeon where you're moving around from one room to the other one. This right here is gonna be a patrol interception. This Nazi patrol needs to be eliminated if you are to reach a rally point. So right now we are kind of ambushing them. So we should have the first go ahead here in combat. Now what's cool about this, I don't necessarily have to use every single person one time. I, if I want to, I could use Chris... Uh, I'm gonna mispronounce these names very terribly. I'm sorry, fellow Polish bros. Uh, Chris... Uh, <laughs> I don't have to use him once and one, one, one. I could use him all three times. But there's gonna be action points over here that dictate how proficient you are in combat. So when you have three of them, you're very, like, 100% more reliable to hit, etc, etc. When it's two, you're kind of like, eh. And when you're at one or zero, you're gonna be very terrible at combat. That's where you kind of have to skip a turn for them, right? So right now we're gonna go with, um, Kristov examining skills, right? So over here is what we have available. This will tell you based on what you see over there oh, under target acquired, where you have to be in the map and where your enemy has to be and the area you're affecting, right? So for instance, um, unlike in Darkest Dungeon where you have four spots in one line, here you have eight spots, four up top, four in the bottom, and there's also things that we could hide behind for better coverage as well. So right now, based on where we're at, we're going to do target acquired. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And we want to aim at the Grenadier right over here, so take a shot. Again, we're going to kind of go through this a bit quickly, so we're not spending the entire video on the tutorial alone. Homeboy landed a little bit of an area of attack right there with that grenade. Fortunately, unlike real life, a grenade doesn't kill me by hitting me. Here, it just injures me a little bit, you know. Tis but a flesh wound, after all. So we're gonna go with Jad Wiga, who is apparently gonna be our healer. And we're gonna be go ahead and do that and drop a heal on Chris. Yeah. I'm gonna call him Chris. A lot easier that way. Homeboy took a single shot, but as you can see, this dude is actually be kind of behind that barrel in a way, right? He's standing overhead. You ideally want him to be crouching, but still, it's still considered cover because he's behind it, right? And you're drawing out, which apparently lured me. Apparently my dude over here, Kasi Mieres, is uh, a ding-dong. Oh, the Nazis hurling insults at me. I better remove myself from cover and come at him here in a freaking gun battle. One little bit of damage could be very much useful. So if you have a clear shot over here with her, she's normally very reliable. He's dead. Don't have to worry about the bleeding out. We got two more attacks. He'll take his right there. Bullet hail. It's all good. Normally, what I'd like to do as well is, um... I won't focus on too much here because I'm just doing a video to just show you how the gameplay works out, but... There's no limitations how much you could heal. So if you're in a fight and you take a bunch of damage and then you're down to, like, you know, your guys with, like, one of theirs left over, 
You could kind of use that time now to just heal up with your person and get them all up to the top HP, because when you're out of combat, whatever HP you left off with, that is how you continue the mission. Although, there are also, like, injuries that... Ooh, nice, my boy, with that crit. There are injuries that accumulate over time, which let's see if we drew any right now. We have one heart, injuries. Characters who suffer damage above a certain threshold suffers an injury. Injuries reduce the character's HP when they return to the hideout and will have to be treated in the hospital. So if we continue using him, he'll have lower HP than usual when we go into combat. So that is something that you can definitely keep in mind. Mission summary, tell us how we're doing. These are all kind of like the districts that are kind of supporting us, right? So if their morale drops to zero, we lose them for good. You're visited by a rather clueless looking young man who insists on joining the uprising in the front line, all fired up to serve where the battle is thickest. He lays out his case with an unflinching, almost romantic passion. However, he also readily admits that he has zero combat experience after living a somewhat sheltered life. Moreover, it is almost by accident that you learn that he has been recently rejected by the love of his life, meaning the entire request may be a facade for an overpowering death wish. When confronted about this, he merely states that neither of them will live to see the end of the war anyway. All hell for the uprising is welcome. Grant his request. Approve his request, but assign him somewhere relatively safe and deny his request. Grant his request. You recruit the man into the uprising, assigning him to one of the planned raids on enemy positions, a decision that is met with his exuberant gratitude. From now on, however, his fate is in his own hands. So we got a 5% momentum uprising. And then over here we have different little areas that we could do stuff at here. So this will send us off to the next mission if we want to. Over here is going to be for injuries. This will be for, I believe, items. Here's where we could barter, repair stuff that are broken or fix stuff that we find that's broken. Codex will be information. We got recruitment. Um, we have Eric. <laughs> I wonder if that's the guy we just brought in over here. <laughs> he looks like somebody that's probably not ready for Gamut, I would say. And this require, like, you know, um, supplies, which we have 300. To get a recruit, it'll cost us 100. I don't think we need him just yet. I think they give you one more after this. And the morgue here, you come and, you know, pay respects to your fallen brethren. So let's go off over to plan a new mission. For this one, we have to neutralize enemy units, three of them. And the mission duration is indeed four days. We'll get commendation, currency for ranking up characters, and a damage revolver, which we could then fix back at the base if we want to. If we fail, increase attrition. So let's go and deploy off over here. And this is where we get to choose who we're taking on our mission with us. So we got our three main characters and that Eric guy that we saw there. He's going to be coming along too. So we might have time to get involved in one extra fight here because we're almost out of time with this one. But hopefully I've given you a good idea how this plays out. Um, in terms of the story, well, I mean, okay, we have some boys there. We could possibly handle an ambush unless they see us. That's what's up, boys. Got that little sneak attack in there. Oh, they got a doggo as well. And we got new codex entries so we have new enemies. Okay. I hate it when they have this. This guy in particular, flamethrower man. And he does like an area attack, constantly setting your ass on fire. This guy's very annoying. Doggo, I don't know anything about. And let's see, 90 on you, 70 on you, 75. Doggo is kind of like the weakest one. Probably the, the dude we want to get out of here as soon as possible. All right, so let's see here. Let's start off by, if we can, set up some bleed effect on Christos, or Chris, as we'll call him. They'll take their turn 15. I'm not crazy about it, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, we'll heal you up soon. Right now, let's see about... You have clear out. Deal 7 and 8 every tick. This will launch a burn attack on him. What I like about this, it ignores covers, deals 10% less damage to each subsequent target. Spends two stamina, so we'll be down to one, unfortunately. But as I mentioned, this guy's so annoying, I feel like it's probably best for us to go after him. Plus, we have a nice little row of characters here to hit. And we hit all of them. This required heavy ammo. And you know what? I was, when I think I did this fight off camera, um, I was very stingy. And then I quickly realized how terrible it was to be stingy, because this guy is super annoying. Doggo, if we could hit this attack, which would be 64% chance, if we at least hit him for 12, he'll die next turn from the burn. Or she's just gonna be a baller and get that crit and kill Doggo. I feel really terrible about killing that dog, by the way. Of course, he had to be a German Shepherd, too, didn't he? <laughs> Alright. Well, on the upside, um, 
she was actually behind cover, so now our boy here is behind cover. Well, this makes me very happy. We got one dude out of the equation. The only guy that's over here hanging out doing really good for them is going to be this guy at 90. But at least they'll be not too bad here. So, let's see. Full auto. It's still that cover that really bothers me. We can take another shot. Oh, we cannot. Oh, so by getting me out of the way. No, I, get, no, I can't hit that guy because we went after Doggo. He's in the first four spots, right? I'm just going to handle a heal. Do a helping hand on this guy. I don't see you being the combat guy, so I'm going to just have you as like a backup healer. We'll take a couple of burns there, but that's fine. They're taking burns too. Their burns are now gone, though. How convenient. What about you? You're still burning over there. Not them, though. But we are. Alright, so let's see here. I'm gonna be honest with you, I just want this guy here, gone forever. Two of them dead. Again, I learned firsthand. Don't even mess with that. Don't be stingy. Get him out of cover if you can. Now we just got one boy over there in the back, so now we should be good. What's happening over here? You are indeed out of stamina, which is no good. But you should be good to go. So what do we got? We got single shots here. 21 to 27. Accuracy. I guess the best one here would be that. 23. Very good. Maybe, just maybe, we put some contraband on you and then maybe next turn you'll be ready to do a shot on your end. For now, we are going to skip that. Let's also go ahead before it becomes a big issue and drop a Healy on you. And that'll be it. And hopefully we could handle, hit this guy with an extra bleed chance with Chris over here. So we got target acquired, 16 to 20, 75% chance to hit. 21 to 27, 95% accuracy. Yes, I think we go with single shot. Oh, come on. That was a flank too, because we're hitting him from the bottom column too as well. I am fairly perturbed about that miss right there. Do me a solid. Um, move, if you may. Um, down over here. And see about getting a single shot on this guy now. 25. It's a flanking, so we'll take it. And we got one more to go. You're out of stamina, unfortunately. You don't have repelling fire. Would have been nice to suppress this guy for a turn or two, but whatever. We'll just take this shot over here. Just about done. With any luck here, assuming we don't miss, this could technically... No, it wouldn't end it for us. It would not end it for us. Make it very close, though. Bring it out, too. What do you got for a return? Volley on my boy over there. That's probably going to be an injury for you, more than likely. At this point, we're done. Clear shot. Oh, man. Jadwiga's dropping crits like nothing over here. It's like candy. It's Halloween. She's just handing out crits to everybody. You are victorious. And that is one of our three neutralized threats here that we got to do. We got some rewards for it. And there you guys have it. This is Warsaw. If you'd like to see a bit more, let me know in the comments. Leave a thumbs up. Otherwise, all the information will be down below in the description in case you want to pick it up for yourselves. Game sure to be out by the time you see this video. I'll catch you guys next time.